what has been given can technically not be taken away. A woman's right to choose. Does the woman have a right to choose to have an abortion? Abortion is not a modern aberration, but a practice common to human com communities throughout history. Indeed, abortion has been used throughout the world for thousands of years as a way of ending a wanted pregnancy. Historically, early abortion was tolerated by the Catholic Church, and for centuries it was not punished under English common law, which has the greatest historical influence on our own Nigerian legal system. This first authoritative collection of canon law, accepted by the Catholic Church in the 1140 AD, contained the conclusion that early abortion was not homicide. Also, Pope Innocent III had written at the beginning of the 13th century that quickening was the moment at which abortion became homicide, and that prior to that, it was less a serious sin. The abortion policy of the Catholic Church continued until 1869, when Pope Pius IX officially eliminated the distinction between an animated and a non-animated fetus and required excommunication for abortions at that stage of at any stage of pregnancy. Recently, Pope Francis said that abortion is not a religious problem in the sense that just because you're a Catholic, you must not seek an abortion. Rather, he said it was a human problem, a problem of eliminating a human life, period. Human or religious? An irony? Maybe not. Posterity would perhaps judge him as the most humane of all popes before him. We'll see. On January 22, 1973, the United States Supreme Court issued a 7-2 decision announcing a landmark ruling that legalized abortion. I'm sure you've all heard of Roe versus Wade and Doe versus Bolton, where the court ruled that the Constitution of the United States protects a pregnant woman's liberty to choose to have an abortion without excessive government restriction. Few in 1973 could have anticipated how explosive the issue of abortion would actually become nor could anyone have known how much the availability of safe legal abortion would contribute to women's social, economic, political advancement for the next quarter of a century. Certainly even in the year 2020, these are still relevant issues. In Nigeria, abortion is legal only when performed to save a woman's life. Can you imagine that? Yet, abortions are very common and most are unsafe because they are still done clandestinely by unskilled providers or by both. So C, unsafe abortion is a major contribution contributor to our country's high levels of maternal death, ill health, and disability. Nigeria still has one of the highest maternal mortality ratios in the world today. Contraception in Nigeria is still very low in uptake. Less than 17% of sexually active women in Nigeria, due to varying factors, actually use contraception. So some use abortions as a means of con contraception and will still be in demand to the foreseeable future. So why not change our laws to make it safe? In 2020, in Canada, where I'm currently residing, abortion is legal at all stages of pregnancy, funded in part by the Canada Health Act. While some non-legal barriers to access continue to exist, such as lacking equal access to providers, I'm very proud to inform you that Canada is the only nation with absolutely no specific legal um, restrictions to abortion at any stage for any reason. A woman demands abortion, she gets it today. Now, I'm a Catholic, a physician, I'm female, obviously, and um, I'm also a politician. So I'm supposed to be right in the middle of the center of this, um, this hot topic, this debate. So does a woman have the right to choose to have an abortion in the first, second, or third trimester of pregnancy? I'm sure we all saw the gruesome video that circulated recently in, in social media where a young lady in police custody just calmly described how she murdered her infant by drowning her in a bucket of water because of the shame, the stigma of an unwanted pregnancy and the rejection from society and attendant disruption of her education. She expressed her regret of not going through with an abortion because her sister persuaded her um, to keep the baby. Now, which is worse? the abortion or the murder? How can we measure one's preparedness mentally, physically, as a human being, much less a pregnant young one? 
My book is it there for? Is for whatever reason or whenever during a pregnancy a woman decides to have an abortion, it is a right to choose, and it's only her right to choose that abortion. Uh, considering the story that um, you narrated, the issue with that uh, um, young lady and uh, also that is common amongst our young lady is not the right to abortion. Is the stigma and the fact that there are you no right no um, education awareness on you know pregnancy and no care you know for little children and so the stigma the rejection that's what made her that's what even pushed some people to say I want to have an abortion but if they know if they are well um, received and the, the education in that aspect the parental care and education it's there and in some cases also by the government, um, would have moved far, would take a step also. I, I also wanted to include that in your advocacy, that there is need for parental care and um, acceptance. So that the fact that a young lady is pregnant does not mean that her life has you know, ended, or that does not mean that uh, she has ended her career or academics. I have some, some classmates who you know, became pregnant while we were in the university, um, some even in secondary school, and but because their parents, you know, received them and you know, supported, them. supported them. Today, some of us who didn't have, you know, who who were upright, some of us are regretting. In retrospect, you look at those children today. Some are grandparents. Recently, a, a friend of mine, he had a child while we were in um, class three or four. You know, he rejected it, but the woman, the, the mother, said no. This is our child. This is our daughter. And recently, he came to my house with this same young baby. Then I said, ah, where did you see this girlfriend? He said, no, this is my daughter. Now she's getting married. I came yeah. to invite you yeah, for a wedding. Imagine. You know? And I felt like, oh, if I had known, I probably would have. You know, so <laughs> when, you, when you encourage such parental support. support, you know, you probably also would have reduced this illegal um, um, abortion. abortion. Let, so let me jo jump in there because I have a similar. You recall that the first time I came on the advocates, I talked about of pregnancies when, when, when school children, school girls have, are pregnant and then you stop them from yes, going, I continue with the schooling and then you allow the boy yeah, if it's a, if it's a girl, yeah, yeah. to continue with schooling. It's still the same thing about the shame and stigma. Yeah. It's there in the society. Once you get pregnant as a young person, your if whether young or not, no support. There yeah. is no support. There's this stigma. There's this shame associated with it. And then getting an abortion is like, oh, you can't do it in a proper hospital. So you mm. have to be clandestine about it. You have to do it under the table. And then that's how our girls get exposed. Infertility issues arise, infection, and all what have you. Some of them die. And then some of them, it affects them when they then get pregnant again and they want to have their babies. Is either they die or they lose the baby because something has gone wrong back then. So as my 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 advice, my advocacy will be to the society. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We should me, just stop all this shaming. Yeah, I, mean, I think and it's, it's, it's an interesting um, no. advocacy because it brings up so many issues, and I'm not it's sure, like it. what Libros and Treasure are saying, abortion necessarily deals with all the myriad of layers yeah. beneath. But yeah. I also want to now ask because when I when I heard your advocacy, I was saying to myself, what is the law for? Is the law just to regulate, or is the law also to uh, safeguard some of the moral codes by which we live our lives. And exactly. that's where I want to weigh in. Yeah. I, would, I would say that a baby is viable even before. Even from, once, once, yeah, once so, so you're taking life. <coughs> from but conception. I, I, I know that it's, it's wrong. Even when you say that, left to me, no baby should be aborted. You no know, baby I'm should coming, be I'm aborted. I'm coming. Let, let me get in we there. Let me land the thought. Hall, I'm coming. No, no, very quickly. So, sorry, Bola Hall. Yeah, um, yeah. Very quickly. So, because I haven't even made my point. So, no baby should be aborted. But when you look at that, you don't want people to become hypocrites as well. Yeah. And now start doing clandestine like you're saying. So, I would still say, let's educate. Let's do everything side by side. Let's educate our people to understand the value of life. Let's educate our girls not to expose themselves to relationships whereby when the child comes into the world, they're not able to handle it. Let's educate the society so that you give the girls the support even when they find themselves even, Give you know, the girls support. Yeah. For me, I, I think we also need to speak with the religious bodies. Um, because religion has a great role to play in how these issues are viewed and how we treat this, this situation and the girls that are involved. Um, as long as we are such a religious society and this matters has implications from a religious perspective, we will never be able to address it totally without bringing in the buy-in and support 
of the religious leaders. We need to be able to know where to intervene, where to give the support. At the same time, why you dissuade it? You dissuade unwanted pregnancy. Rookie had pointed out a fundamental misorientation. I'll be saying more about how to get us back on track after the break. <laughs>